Hey everyone, I'm Kerry Smith and I'm sitting here with Amar Shah. We're both with Client First Capital. And today we're discussing the differences between working with an asset manager or a financial planner. And, um, you know, this is a topic that I think a lot of people, you know, are curious about what are the differences and are there advantages to using one over, over the other. So hopefully we can, you know, provide some clarity in our conversation today. So Amar, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, kind of kick us off. Yeah, I think we should start with the traditional definition, right? So a traditional asset manager, that person's responsibility is to manage assets, right? So traditionally, they're not looking at your financial planning needs or withdrawal needs or retirement income needs. It's to manage money, right? A financial planner, on the other hand, is really to look at all the things that you have in your financial picture and to figure out what is the plan to get you a successful retirement. And, and traditionally, those have been the two definitions. Yeah, so, but I think that's important and that's a good place to start because where the confusion might come in, some people probably feel like, well, my asset manager, isn't he a financial planner? Or maybe the bigger misconception is, well, isn't my financial planner an asset manager? Right. And so I think that that's where some of the confusion starts, because, you know, a lot of financial planners are really good at developing a good financial plan, helping you stay on track and, and be successful. But they're not necessarily managing your assets. Is that is that uh, you agree with that? Yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, for most large firms, uh, the individuals managing the funds are different than the ones managing the relationships. Right. So there's a separation there and the financial planner does a good job of due diligence of, you know, what's the right risk tolerance? How do we manage these funds uh, for your distribution needs in the future? But the asset manager is not taking a look at that. They're in a silo. It's separate. And, and that's to, uh, they're doing it totally different. Uh, they're just focused on managing the money. Um, and if you look at the flip case, um, there are asset managers that also dabble in financial planning, right? So they're focused on asset management, but they'll also create a plan to say, yes, you're on track, you're hitting your goals. But but the main focus for them is really just asset management, the asset management piece. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I'll just share a little bit of just my own experience, if, if, uh, if you don't mind. And, you know, I've been in the financial services industry for, you know, over 30 years and have led teams of financial planners and, and advisors. And I feel like I'm pretty well grounded in, in the financial concepts and understanding risk tolerances and the importance of time horizons and, and, mm -hmm. and all of these sorts of things. But I'm also have had a full time job where I'm focusing on customers and clients and employees and all of those sorts of things. So personally, I've tended to have my assets and my savings, my retirement um, professionally managed by an asset manager because I'm not I don't have the time every day. Um, and although I have some expertise, I don't have the expertise of a professional who does this every day. So just from my my own experience, um, I have you know, preferred having my assets professionally managed, even though I'm in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So an asset manager, not only are they going to bring experience uh, in the role of managing money, making decisions, um, they're also going to bring in a process, right? What is the strategy? You know, when are we going to make certain decisions? You know, we have a heavy macro week this week, uh, for example. When are we going to make adjustments to portfolios? And when do those reflect to the client's portfolios, right? And so... Asset managers, you know, not only experience, but have the expertise because, you know, there's a lot of uh, data out there of, you know, what drives uh, decision making from the portfolio standpoint. Uh, flows are a, lot, a big part of that. But an active management, uh, active management or a money manager will also bring in a disciplined process. And I think that's key because a lot of individuals that are, um, you know, index investing or self-directing themselves, um, you know, some of them have a process, I would say, but a majority don't. And a lot of emotions are driving some of those decisions. 
So, you know, you said, you know, when do you rebalance and when do you go in and, and, you know, from my personal experience and what led me to having someone manage my assets was, you know, when I would go in and rebalance was usually several months after I should have, uh, because <laughs> I wasn't staying on top of it and, you know, things were changing, but my portfolio wasn't, it was staying static until I finally found the time or the motivation to get in there and make some changes. And, you know, making changes is not just easy. You have to understand what's going on in the environment, what's going on in the economy, you know, where do you want to position your portfolio? And I found that that it was better to have someone who's thinking about that all the time than me trying to do a little bit of research um, at the time that I'm motivated to go in and make some changes or updates to my portfolio. Yeah, and, and to be fair, um, you know, asset managers don't have a crystal ball, right? right. So there could be periods of time where uh, somebody managing their own funds versus a professional manager, they can have outperformed, right? But if you take, you know, step back and look at a longer view, right? You know, the odds are in the favor of somebody that's professionally managing money yeah. uh, to make the right decisions over a longer period of time. Yeah. So, Mar, let's let's talk about another you know thing that I think people think about as they're considering a, a, a asset manager, and that is you know cost, right? And so, so if you're going to have someone manage your assets, there's going to be a fee associated with that. My personal opinion has been, I believe that the fees that I'm paying to have my asset my assets managed, they will the probability of them performing better than me doing it myself is is great enough to cover the cost of 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 someone managing the portfolio. But just your thoughts on the cost efficiency of using an asset manager? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there, there's definitely a cost, right? Right. And I think that the value that you get from that cost breaks out into three different categories. One is peace of mind, right? So you know, you can play with your grandkids, you could go on trips, go on vacations and still know that the assets are managed, right? Somebody's looking at the risk profile and actively rebalancing and managing those parameters, right? The second uh, part of that is active tax loss harvesting or making sure that there's a strategy in place to know how to, you know, so, so the value is not directly in the rate of return, but it's also managing your tax component of those investments better. Um, you know, I would say most people that do their own investments use average co cost basis, ACB, um, whereas the asset manager will do a lot basis. So each specific lots that they're tracking. Um, and, and there's obviously software that helps the asset manager do this. And then the third factor in terms of cost is um, you're right, the, the probability of outperforming um, a, somebody managing funds over a longer period of time does increase in the favor of a portfolio manager. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And so you mentioned peace of mind. You know, probably if I was to boil down the reason why I've, you know, trended towards using a professional asset manager is that peace of mind that is being managed professionally it's being looked at constantly it's not relying on on me and um and then the, they're also bringing their experience and their research and their knowledge to the table whenever they're managing and rebalancing my portfolio so that peace of mind i think is probably the main reason um i've trended um, towards using a an asset manager yeah and i think that third party sounding board when you're trying to make changes and stuff like that is important to have that asset manager, right? Is because in 2008, 2009, there are a lot of people thinking, well, I'm going to get out of, of, of my portfolios. I, you know, you can make the wrong decision that could have a long term impact, right? And, and, and not to say that getting out was a, the wrong decision, but to evaluate how much liquidity do I have on hand? Okay, that liquidity is going to buy me at least, you know, 48 months worth of expenses, can I last 48 months to give my portfolio time to come back and, and recover, right? Yeah. And so having that third party conversation is uh, could be priceless for some people. Okay, Amar, I'm going to put you on the spot here. So I think we've, I think we've covered a lot of material. Yeah. And I have maybe a bonus one here in just a moment. 
but um, I wasn't keeping track enough. So could you kind of summarize just real quick the key points um, as the advantages for using a, an asset yeah. manager? So I think the expertise and the experience and, and, and on an ongoing basis, right? I think that active management will provide a disciplined process, like an institutionalized disciplined process, um, not like ad hoc, oh, we're going to do this or that, or rules based, or you're 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 based off of uh, one individual, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's other savings in terms of tax loss harvesting, uh, lot cost basis versus average cost basis. Also having that sounding board. So when you're making decisions and you have the right framework for you, um, I think it's also also really important. So I would say that those are the top top reasons why okay. asset managers exist. <laughs> okay. I, well, I think you did a better job of summarizing than I could have. So mm -hmm. so thanks for letting me put you on the spot. Yeah. Here's my bonus. The the bonus is, you know, many times when you're working with a professional asset manager, you're not you don't have to necessarily give up the financial planning and the estate planning and the tax strategies. Um, you know, a lot of your financial planners aren't asset managers, but you can find asset managers that are financial planners and you're not paying additional for those services and you're not giving them up either. So, you know, to, to me, that's a kind of the bonus also of working with an asset manager. Just your your thoughts on my, my bonus there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And uh, if you're looking or want want to just explore that option, you should check us out. <laughs> yeah, well said. Yeah. And so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up and I just, uh, you know, if you watch this, just appreciate you watching it and hopefully you found some value here. But if you have some questions or want to know more or dig a little bit deeper, reach out to us at Client First Capital. Um, you can click on the link to access our website or you can give us a call, schedule appointment, whatever works well for you. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. All right. Thanks. See you, Mark. Yep.